how can you be sure that the automated scoring is accurate? We have rigorous test development and validation procedures um, which we follow very carefully and um, along the test development process there are various checkpoints um, to check for quality control. So um, we have quality assurance during the test development uh, at test launch and also ongoing uh, validation checks after the test is released. So during development, well first of all we train our item writers carefully. We give them um, item specifications, um, detailed specifications which they work from. We also review all our items very carefully. We have um, independent uh, expert PhD linguists around the world who review our items for us um, and check for things like uh, tricky items, cultural bias, general knowledge, anything outside the construct that we want to test. Um, we also have our own internal experts, a team of test developers who check all our items thoroughly. Uh, that's even before we conduct any field testing. Um, once the items have gone through certain control procedures and they're deemed good enough, then we um, do our field testing. And based on the field test data, we have another round of quality control checks. Um, we have qual qualitative checks um, and quantitative checks. So we qualitatively look at our items, look at how people responded to them. Can all the native speakers answer them correctly? Because if a native speaker can't answer, we have to throw that item out. Um, we check that the items elicited the language that we wanted them to elicit. And then we also conduct um, quantitative checks on the data. Uh, we use um, advanced statistical modeling such as IRT, item response theory, uh, so that for every item we can place it on a difficulty range. We know exactly how difficult each of the items in our item pool are relative to each other. Um, this item is answered correctly by this proportion of people, the next item is, is answered by fewer people correctly, and so on. Um, and this means that we can carefully control all our item parameters. Um, we also check for certain reliability thresholds. If um, an item discriminates well, it stays in the pool. If it doesn't discriminate well enough or it's catching out the high-level candidates, it gets thrown out. Um, and um, so that's during the development. Uh, moving on, before we launch, or rather at launch, we conduct uh, another kind of quality control process, which is a validation. Typically, we get about 150 test takers, um, representative of the target population. And um, we have them take our new test. Um, and we run their responses through the automated scoring models. And then we provide their responses to expert human judges. And we have the judges evaluate the test takers uh, on dimensions of language such as pronunciation and fluency. And then we can compare the expert judgment scores and the machine scores and make sure that they align carefully. Now typically we get correlations between the two sets of scores at above 0 0.95, above 0 0.96, 0 0.97, um, where the highest possible is one. So there's a, a very high degree of agreement in our tests between uh, machine scores and expert human judgments. We, um, after launch, we continually monitor the item pool and conduct validation studies as well. Uh, the, the item pool and the data that comes in, um, we conduct uh, data forensics and um, we monitor the statistical properties of the items. Uh, we look for items that may have been compromised, that may have been leaked out into the public domain which people can answer. Uh, we look for evidence of test takers cheating by, for example, unusual score patterns. Um, and we um, uh, monitor the item pool uh, semi-randomly. We, uh, our test developers internally, are always listening to responses and just listening for things uh, which sound unusual. So um, although people think they can try and trick the system because no one's listening, that's not really the case. Um, we conduct ongoing validation studies as well. For example, one of our customers asked, 
how do we know there isn't a practice effect? Uh, what if I took the test uh, three times in a row? Would I get better at taking this test? Um, and we conducted a study where we had um, 150 test takers take the test three times in a row. Computer, telephone, computer. Some of them took telephone, computer, um, telephone test. Um, and so we can see that the different modes of delivery don't affect the test score, and there was no practice effect either. The uh, test-retest correlations were extremely high, 0 0.96, 0 0.97, I think. Um, uh, this shows that it is consistent scoring. Test takers will earn the same score every time they take this test. Finally, we conduct validation studies, um, concurrent validation studies with other tests that are out there. So uh, big well-known tests such as the IELTS or TOEIC or TOEFL, we sometimes uh, we do it ourselves, sometimes we go to um, independent language test researchers, uh, and we conduct studies where we have test takers take our Versant test and another test, such as the IELTS or the TOEFL, and then we compare the two sets of scores, um, and we get very high correlations there as well. Our concurrent val validity is very good, usually in the range of 0 0.7, 0 0.8 or higher. Um, and if you get in contact with our, um, our marketing department, they can provide these um, studies for you. <laughs>